All right, just getting started here. And it looks like Robert Brossom won the mat or die roll here. So Mike's going to go see what they're playing. are uh, two local players here today. Say Robert from Menominee and Bob from Eau Claire. So, uh, <laughs> All right, well, we've got, uh, are you already on to it, Bob and Bob? Yep, Bob and Bob. <laughs> Eau Claire v. Menominee. Oh, is this the uh, the infamous Bobby? Yes. Oh, okay. This this is Bobby. The trademark Bobby shuffle. <laughs> Bob took the mulligan. Well, it does look like Bob or Robert is on some sort of junk variant. Yeah, I'm seeing a serum visions and looks like a spell snare over on Bobby's hand. So I'm... My first guess is going to be twin from him. I can see that because that looks like a Fester Might. Mm -hmm. Fetch is the Temple Garden. Probably going to lead off with the higher arc. Or just... Okay. Wait for the cuts. There we go. Birds. There we go. The slightly worse noble hierarch, but slightly better as well. It can tap for black. Not again. Not <laughs> again. That's a click. I'm almost assured this is twin now. Yep, I see a pester mate. Shocks it in. That's for us. Probably just leading with the serum visions. Gonna set up a couple draws here. I think you gotta land off that one. Yep. Oof. But he ships them both. Yeah, you can't keep either of those. You have a scalding tarn in your hand too, that's the worst part. Mm hmm. That's where I almost think you lead with the scalding tarn instead of the steam vents, just so you can get the land out of your deck at this point. Mm -hmm. He kept a three lander as far as I could tell. Oh, no, maybe I'm wrong. Uh, it looks like he just has a tarn. Doesn't have Exalted Bob. Oh, okay. No, no. <laughs> Definitely an Inquisition. All right, let's see his hands. Oh, a little bit of a glare there, but I believe those three are lands. takes the click out of the hand because taking redundant pester mites doesn't feel great. Mm -hmm. No turn to play other than the Inquisition from Bob though. A little awkward use of the mana but it's alright. <laughs> the real awkward part about it is, is that your life total doesn't always matter that much against twin game one. Exactly. Sometimes you just get there. That's a that's a spicy looking Absan charm in uh, Bob's hand there. Focusing crystal is slightly off. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby fetches an under turn probably to go get a uh, steam vents tapped. Nothing too surprising with the modern fetching. A little bit of a staring match going on. <laughs> Surprised that Bob hasn't, uh, he hasn't really made a proactive play yet. No. Wonder if he's just going to use the Abzan charm to draw two. Would not surprise me. Fetch and draw two at the end of the turn. Oh, he doesn't need to fetch, he can just use the birds. Well, yeah, just to get the land out of there. Yeah. yeah. Bobby finds his third land. 
another fetch. The Snapcaster in the end. Let's go get the Overgrown Tomb, yep. Get your perfect fixing, everybody. Can make three of any color at this point. Mm -hmm. Thanks to the wonderful Birds of Paradise. There we go. There's the uh, end of turn Abzan charm. He's at the path, so that's good. At least, uh, at least you won't auto lose. Mm -hmm. Let's see. It's almost a uh, slightly worse sign in blood, but you know, In whatever. Speed, can't complain, right? I can. Yeah. It's not going <laughs> to do much, though. No. Bob's still going to play it. But the added utility is great. Thoughtsies. Let's see what he has. No, but at least two Pesamrites, a Spell Snare, and a uh, Snapcaster. And two lands. You know, two Pesamrites that we knew about, the Spell Snare that we knew about, the only real new card is the Snapcaster Mage. Which he drew last turn. I think in this case, he almost feel like, uh, depending on what he has on hand, I haven't seen Bob's hand yet. Yeah, Snapcaster. Yep. He just doesn't care about the Pastor Mites right now, and rightfully so. Yeah, no point in going for the one that he's doubled up on. Bob doesn't have Twin. He's not He's not threatening Twin right now. Nope. And getting rid of the chance for him to Serum Vision on his own turn. It's very nice. The uh, Woodland Cemetery is nice there. Would've been real nice if he'd been able to use all of his mana that turn and follow it up with a Seed Rhino or something. Just to uh, start applying real pressure to Bob. That's uh, that's really what Robert needs to start going for here. Because it's nice that you're being able to keep him off twin right now, but if you can't win the game, that doesn't matter. It, I think it's called Glimpse. It looks like he has a land, a slaughter pact, and a path in his hand. Yeah. So he's definitely protected from the combo, but he doesn't have a way to win the game right now. Mm -hmm. and it looks like Bobby can just go into the secondary plan of twin, which is just get him. <laughs> Burn him out, yeah. 13. Draws for the turn. Another snappy. All I can say right now is that a blood moon would just be real funny for both players. <laughs> I think I'd like to see <laughs> a snapcaster getting back that serum visions this turn. But no? Just holding it up. I think it's fine if he leaves up the spell snare, potentially getting a goy for another two drop. Mm -hmm. There's the kitchen finks. I don't think Bobby's gonna have anything for that. Spell snare looks real funny in, in the face of a kitchen finks. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Rob goes up to fourteen. That's important for the burn plan, too. Mm -hmm. Now he's out of the uh, Pester Might Beat plan. He can still go for it, it's just going to be uh, less optimal. I assume we'll tap down the Temple Garden or the bird. Bob probably floats a white. Does nothing with it. No point in using the path until it's time. Ooh. Yeah, until he finds the Splinter Twin. That's a grim lava mancer. That's gonna take care of Bob's ward pretty quick. And there's the Pestermite beats. On the twelve. <laughs> Plays the Sulphur Falls in his hand. Yep. Now you just run out the Grim Lava Mancer. Yeah, no reason not to. Because now you are pretty much on the uh, burn plan. Mm -hmm. Burn plan with the oops, I win if I draw Splinter Twin. Yep. Obviously we know that he's not because of the path and the yes. slaughter path. Yes, but, but 
From Bobby's perspective, there's goes down to eleven. I think you fetch a basic here just in case. You don't really need any more fixing. Mm -hmm. Probably. Uh, ooh, oh. no. We're going for the Temple Garden. We like greed. Why not? Well, it's very possible that Bobby isn't playing the, the Blood Moons in his main, and maybe that's what uh, Robert's betting on. It doesn't always seem like a good bet to me, though. No. No, not when that's your fifth land draw. Well, that, no, yeah. When it's your fifth land, you already have a Birds of Paradise. You can go for something like uh, a Black Mana. Yeah. So if you're playing Liliana the Veil in this, in this deck, you can still cast it. Mm hmm Oh, well, even a basic forest wouldn't feel horrible. Nope. Tough guy kitchen thing's gonna get in there. <laughs> that three damage is quite a bit. Is that an herb ward? It is. Well, Which now all Bobby's thought seasons are turned on. <laughs> Play as another undeterred Pestermite, I would imagine. At this point, there's no reason not to. No. Tap yeah. down the bird. Yep. Makes sense. That way, hopefully, he can get six damage at Bob's or Robert's face next turn. If he had a remand in hand, Splinterton would just be an amazing draw right now. Mm -hmm. That is a mountain, though. That's not going to get the job done. No. I think I'd like to see him splinter twin and bring back the Serum Visions. But a Snapcaster to bring or back the Serum Visions? Yeah, yep. Well, he got six damage on the board right now. F puts Bob down to five at the end of Bob's turn because obviously he's not going to activate Lava Mancer. Mm -hmm. Going for the path now. I think he has a Slaughter Pack in hand still, so there's yes. no reason not to. Yeah. Save yourself damage. Mm hmm. Yeah, uh, she's going to be a close one. Not only that, but with Bobby's draw of a mountain, that makes the, uh, the path feel even worse. Grabs the basic island. Bob takes two, goes to nine. Hmm. I suppose there's no real reason to play the mountain from your hand there. No, no. Hold it up, make him think you have something. It's better off representing. Uh, he's not hurting for mana. <laughs> That's for sure. I feel like you use the Grim Lava Mancer as a healing cell here. You can, you, yeah. You definitely can. The only real difference, the only real problem is that, uh, if you do, like, were you talking just block, or were you talking, uh... Not shoot it. Shoot it? Yeah. Shoot it, he will gain two life, which is... It's... A non-negligible amount, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. That spell snare is not looking any good right now. Yeah. I just play the Snapcaster for a body. Bobby really wishes he had a bolt in the graveyard right now, I bet. Mm -hmm. Yep, there's the Snapcaster. I don't even think he has any relevant targets in the graveyard. Nah, just targeted the Serum yep. Visions. Target the Serum Visions. Bob gets a Spell Snare. But it doesn't feel fair, it doesn't feel bad for Bob because now you you know that you're you're playing against the top of his deck. Mm -hmm. With a Slaughter Pact in hand, it's, uh, it's definitely an easy way to play. Nope, yeah, there we go. No reason not to get rid of the lands. Oh, yeah. 
keep your action in there just in case. Putting Bob to five. If he draws a bolt here, he can just win. He has a lot of good draws right now. Mm -hmm. Ooh, click. Click is certainly not a bad one. Yeah, attack for four. Bob's almost pressed the block with the uh, Birds of Paradise. Oh yeah, he has no other option with that Grim Lava Mancer there. Slyre packing his own kitchen things. That's <laughs> creative. Gaining the two and then he can block the Snapcaster. <laughs> I agree with Bobby's pose. This isn't an easy one to figure out. We're just going through the persist trigger. Bob gains two life. Gains a chump blocker. Oh, and Bobby's going to probably kill the Kitchen Sphinx now. Yeah. Might as well save the Snapcaster. Yep. <laughs> we have the slaughter pack dice on Bob's deck. <laughs> oh, you don't want to forget that one. Takes four down to three. Yeah, you know how that goes. Right. <laughs> We're locking into that one. <laughs> In fairness, you only missed one of the triggers. Right. Uh, Pays for slaughter pact. Untaps. Things aren't looking good for Robert here. Click you. During the draw step. <laughs> you can keep that card. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's exactly what Bobby wanted to see. And Bob is just dead on board. Right. Looks like we're going to game two. Yep. Going to the sideboard, I imagine Bob's going to bring in some enchantment hate, or Robert's going to bring in some enchantment hate. Oh. Uh, Bobby here. Oh, there's his blood moons. Yeah, we're definitely bringing in those. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if there's anything else in that board that you really want. Rending Volley's not going to do much. Uh, spell Skype doesn't feel horrible, but he does play quite a bit of removal. I think, yeah, the spells get to eat some of the removal definitely isn't a bad call. Especially with the ability to run a Brought Decay in Robert's deck. We didn't see one, but that doesn't mean it's not there. Alright, oh, Tim's adjusting it, okay. <laughs> got some deck lists here. Who did I get? Oh, I got Bobby. It's turn to win. <laughs> See, I feel like that's the misnomer because it's uh... uh I feel like that's kind of a misnomer because without the uh, the Simeon Spirit Guides, we're not doing this right. <laughs> no, I think it's more as just a joke. I do have the uh, Robert sideboard here. I see a uh, Back to Nature, Celestial Purge, couple chokes, uh, Blood Baron, Creeping Corrosion, Feed the Clan, a Gaddic Teague, a Gari Charm, a Memricide, a Rest in Peace, two Smothers, a Stony Silence, and a Thrun. A lot of one ups here. And uh, I say most of these actually seem to have a lot of play against the deck. I mean, more side is definitely coming in. There's no way it's not. Oh, yes. Uh, Gaddic Teague I can see coming in. Uh, uh, Thrun seems okay. The Smothers seem definitely fine. Uh, as far as coming out, I can see, see Thragtus coming out. I can see Abzan Charm coming out. Smiter can come out. Bob, uh, Robert uh, is running a two of Tassiger in his deck, which seems pretty spicy. Not, it's sort of becoming the norm with all these uh, That's true. black X decks running around. The... Uh, 
thing here, though, I, I do think that we can get rid of the Tassigur in this matchup. Yes. I don't think the value that you gain off Tassigur is relevant enough. I also feel there's two of locks on Smiter in the main isn't necessary in this matchup. No. But we definitely got plenty to take out and plenty to put in. The one thing I do like, it's not going to come up in this matchup, but in Bob's sideboard is that Blood Baron of Escopa. Yes. It's one of those cards that in the Junk Mirror it just wins because there's nothing that can take care of it unless they're playing the random Miser's Beast within. Or Liliana Sacrifice. Yeah. But generally you play uh, a yeah. higher creature density. Yeah, yeah, no, with a uh, Blood Baron costing five? Yep, yeah, three five. black, white. It's, you should have at least one other creature out. Um... Interesting notes. Robert here does want a 61 card main board. That's uh, that's just a Robert thing, though. That it is. That it is. It's funny because when Brent was talking to us last night, one of Robert's friends, uh, he was uh, looking to cut the 61st card that uh, Robert normally makes him play. Surprisingly, uh, Bobby playing the normal Ancient Grudge sideboard. Is actually running the one stomping ground with a one breed pool instead of normally they just run the one green source. Mm -hmm. He's running an actual two. But he also is running fire spout. He is also card. running the fire spout, which I I don't know how much I like fire spout in this. Uh, I suppose it doesn't kill your uh, your pester mites. No. Or your Vendelian click, which he's running. Uh, two in his main, so... Yep, uh, two clicks in his main. Two Pester Mites in the main. Four to Zero Axe Arc. It's a pretty stacked twin list. Mm -hmm. uh, two Is It Charms. I'm not a huge fan of Is It Charm. I know a lot of people are. It's not something that uh, I've experimented with it. it. It never really felt that great to me. Uh, in this current meta that we have, at least locally here in uh, Eau Claire, Wisconsin, I feel like Electrolyze would be much better than Is It Charm, just because there is a lot of lingering souls running around. Yes. Which, speaking of which, Robert is running three in his main. So yeah, that that that's some that's one place where you'd much just rather have the electrolyze than anything else. And I think Bobby's just finishing up sideboarding here. Looks like he brought in five cards, three of which were uh, definitely the three blood moons, and I think the two spell skites came yep. in. Oh, I saw. It looks like I saw it in his grave or his uh, sideboard yet. So. Maybe he didn't bring him in. Uh, I can't think of anything else you'd really want to bring in in this matchup. Uh, unless he wanted the spell pierce to help counter all the, the non-creature spells he's been seeing. Mm. I can see that, but I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of that. That's uh, I think that's going a little too deep in uh, it. Yes. Uh, a lot of Bob's removal is going to be one or two cost, and a lot of the two cost is not counterable. Mm -hmm. As we can see, it looks like Bob did take out that Abzan charm. Yep, he's only running he, the one. He runs two in his main. Two. I can imagine he took out both. It's not going to feel great in this matchup. No, no, especially when you can bring something in like Choke or Memorcide or. Yeah. yeah. Even Gogari Charm feels better. It was a customer who came into D20 the uh, couple weeks ago, and uh, asked for Memory Aside, and I actually had no idea what he was talking about. <laughs> and uh, he's like, it's like uh, you could search your library, search your opponent's library for cards. It's like, oh, you mean Memoricide, or well, whatever it's called. <laughs> it's like, no, at least get close to the name. There's no Y in Memory Side in Memoricide. There's, there's just none. All right, opening sevens. I assume Bob will be on the uh, play, or Bob Robert will be on the play for this. We really shouldn't have gotten two Bobs right at the beginning. <laughs> that, that was it's just gonna be confusing for everybody. I think Bob is on a snap keep here. Robert. Oh yeah, double abrupt decay. That looks good. Double abrupt decay, scavenging ooze, birds of paradise. You don't get to do it right away. Which I am seeing. It looks like a twin and a pestermite in uh, Bob's opening hand. Uh -huh. Robert also has a thought seize, so he's gonna be able to lead with the forest, play the birds of paradise. Hopefully, it's up an impressive turn too. If he can uh, find a second land, he can both Thought Seize and land a Scavenging Ooze. Right. I don't think there's uh, 
Anything else Bobby's going to do this turn, so playing the fetch line and passing the turn seems just fine. Not I don't right. see a serum visions in his hand. Yeah. No. Here we go. Did Bob get the land? Does not look like it. You gotta go Gari charm though. Okay, so you bring it in. Taps for black. Plays this box. Please. Two twins. <laughs> There's that, some redundancy. That, that is a hand full of redundancy. Bob not finding a second land is definitely big here. Bob's gonna jot it down here quick. Or, sorry, Robert. Exarch, Pestermite, Double Twin, Double Snap, and the Steam Vents. He's not very reactive with his hand, but that's sometimes you just have to go for it. No, I think uh, Bob's definitely hoping that he gets either a uh, one cost removal spell or uh, another removal spell just off the top just to protect uh, protect himself from the combo in one more way. Mm -hmm. The abrupt decays are nice, but being two mana when you're choked on mana is definitely not somewhere you want to be right now. Especially one if uh, Bobby here gets a bolt or anything and just kills that bird, that's it's gonna cut you off from black. Interesting. He takes the pestermite. The uh, the Gari argument charm. That's interesting. I'll say with the uh, the argument of not taking the pestermite is definitely that uh, you most likely always kept your Inquisition in, which he's playing two of, mm -hmm. and. Uh, the Inquisition can hit the Pestermite as well as the Seaver Exarch, where it can't hit the Splinter Twin. So if he top decks like the Inquisition now, he can grab the other Seaver Exarch, but I think uh, with the uh, Pestermite being able to be taken care of by more cards than the Splinter Twin, I'm not sure that was the correct call. Balfour falls off the top for uh, Bobby here. Which is, in all honesty, exactly what he needed to draw. Yeah, no, he is he is full in on business now. He's got his uh, he's got the double red that he needs. He doesn't really have a turn two play, so he can actually just play the steam vents tapped, not take any damage, mm -hmm. and, and not uh, give up what he drew. Yep. Oh, well, we definitely got the one mana removal flow we're looking for. But not the land. I think you can play the scavenging is here pretty safely. Mm -hmm. Bobby exiles two spear and simian spirit guides. <laughs> you're uh, you're gonna have a good judge call on ya. There we go. There's the fourth land. Definitely play this all for falls. And step Deceiver Exarch. Did, uh, yeah, Robert did find his second land finally, and it is a fetch. So he'll be able to get the things he needs. Deceiver Exarch not coming into block. Uh, it feels much better probably to tap down uh, either the, the forest or the bird. I'd probably tap down the bird here. Tapped on the bird and take him off uh, certain removal spells at the very least. Mm -hmm. And that way also if he has a, a Maelstrom Pulse or anything like that, he's not going to fall prey to uh, Sorcery Speed removal. Nope, Bob's just going to go right for the oh. Smother. Right for the Smother. Okay. Which is uh, a Cyborg card, which is two of. Definitely a card he brought in. Card that I know I personally love. I don't know how I feel about the the Worldway card, but you know, <laughs> to each their own. Yeah, we can't account for taste. <laughs> I think we're going over the Deceiver XR trigger here. I think uh, Robert's just kind of saying that it doesn't matter. Ooh, oops, somebody hit the camera. Hey, they hit the camera. Looks oh, like Robert got a little ambitious there. <laughs> Punching the camera. Yeah, that's what he thinks about that Deceiver Exarch. <laughs> oh, yep, we definitely did have the judge call. I 
I'm curious to see what uh, the judge call here is about, like whether or not uh, Bobby gets to resolve his trigger or not. Because mm -hmm. really, no matter what happens, no matter what happens, the Deceiver Exarch is getting smothered. Yes. The trigger doesn't get to resolve before Deceiver Exarch does. Or before a smother does, I should say. Yes. Sorry about the uh, camera difficulty there. Robert got uh, definitely a little jovial with his judge call and punched the camera. We're all amateurs here, so uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll take the lumps as they come. Yep, definitely grabs the God of the Shrine. That way he at least has all three of his colors accessible to him. Mm -hmm. I think uh, oh, I think we're just waiting. Bobby targeted the Verdant Catacombs with his Deceiver XR trigger. Deceiver XR then goes to the graveyard from Smother. At least this opens up a line for Bobby where he can just play the stomping ground tap and... Uh, Ooh, there's a bolt. Bolt can take care of that scavenging goose right now, or the bird. He could actually do both. He does have a snapcaster. He could bolt snapcast bolt. Which doesn't feel like the worst play he can make. Especially no. killing that bird in order to take some mana away. And I think by shocking that in, that's exactly what Bob is planning on doing here. Mm -hmm. The good old white bordered lightning bolt to scavenge goose. Yeah. He is definitely dead, Jim. There we go. We're going to go ahead and take care of that, too. And there's Leave that Bob with board no wipe. board. And <laughs> <laughs> yep. And they said they were too powerful. Bob is going to follow up with a goif. Yeah. Let's see here. We definitely have a land and instant to creature. Yep, four or five. Bob is looking at right now. Put the steam vents in tap. Knock an attack into a 4-5. Seems like a good call. <laughs> I think holding up the jump block feels alright. That siege runner doesn't feel great. Yeah, looks like he's just going to take it. Did not block. Alright, getting in there with the snapcaster. Yep. Bob finds his third land. Unfortunately, it's just another green source. Yeah. Nice Robert hand. is definitely winning the race here, though. Yes, he is. See what he doing? Didn't see the draw there. Looks that like looks a like spell snare. Is it a spell snare? Yeah, yep, that's okay. a spell snare. I got excited. I thought it might have been an X-Dark. Mm -hmm. Spell snare coming about three turns too late. Bobby can definitely uh, take a little bit patient yet. Hope for uh, Robert to Shack it in. Definitely gets to play the uh, Siege Rhino now. He can attack, and uh, if Bobby doesn't block, he's just dead. Take four, goes to three. Oh, Bob just passes the turn. Interesting. Play the Siege Rhino. I suppose he does have uh, two unknowns in hand, either which could be a mana or a uh, removal spell. Abrupt decay is the Snapcaster Mage. No, pass. Or pass. Okay. Bobby's hand certainly isn't feeling great now. No, he's uh, he's been blanking on too many of his top decks. Like we will 
definitely be going to a game three here. Mm -hmm. I don't think he has another creature in hand. I believe he still has a Pestermite. Does he not? Oh, oh snapcaster. just another Snapcaster. The good old chump block Snapcaster. I don't believe he has any value in his graveyard. I, oh, yep, he used the bolt on the other Snapcaster Mage. Oh, nice and abrupt decay before the player blocks. And it can't be countered, so mm -hmm. the spell snare in his hand is just going to sit there and look awkward again. Spell Snare is definitely one of those cards that you play enough of and uh, you learn to both hate it and love it in a lot of situations. He's going to scoop him up. Dead on board to the 4 5 Tarmogoy. Alright, so it looks like we're going to be going to a game three. Looks like we got about 13 minutes left in the round. So most likely have a time extension from the judge call. I don't know if anyone changes anything here. Yeah. Looks like Bobby's gonna board in another spell snare. Two other cards are coming in as well. Looks like he's gonna bring in spell skites now. Makes sense after all the removal. Mm -hmm. yeah, it looks like he has a spell pierce as a main. Yeah, he definitely has a spell pierce as main. I don't know if that's what he boarded in. I don't know if he boarded in the second spell pierce that he has in the sideboard. It definitely feels like a card he could have boarded out, though. Yeah, no, it, it doesn't feel great. Like, you can stop a lot of the uh, the higher end removal, mm -hmm. but generally, like, Twin wants to be winning by that. I think Izzet Charm is actually a real easy cut here. Yes. You get almost no value off of it. It's basically just a loot effect against uh, any junk variant here. Mm -hmm. Which Bob is very happy with his configuration. He just started shuffling yeah, up. Yeah, no, he's, uh, <laughs> he's like, this is a good 60. We're going to shuffle it up and deal. <laughs> if it worked for game two, it better work for game three. He sides out a Blood Moon, too. Going down to two. And uh, Bob's happy with his 75 now, or 60, and he's going to give us a quick pile of shuffle before we uh, head on to our wonderful game three. Bobby on the play. It seems, I think it's gonna be a much more interesting game from his uh, from his perspective. Oh yeah, being on the play definitely helps him a lot. Hopefully, uh, he keeps a hand with cantrips this time, as we found out, at least in the last game, not having any cantrips in his hand. Like he had all gas and he had all combo pieces that were going to win him the game. Should Bob have no interaction with him, but, but uh, keeping a cantrip just so you can sculpt your draws a little bit more and find other answers is definitely something that we're looking. We're looking for uh, Bob to do in this game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's definitely the the hand last turn he did last game. He definitely couldn't mull it away, but it didn't feel the best to go against uh, hand disruption. I, I think he can pretty easily ship this one. It doesn't look that great from what I can see. No, it only looks like looks two like non lands. Yeah, it looks like only it looks like five and two. Bob, on the other hand, he looks like he has uh, a Robert. I should say, on the other hand, looks like he has a pretty keepable hand. 
Yep. That's suspected. Bobby's going to go ahead and uh, ship that one. Did I see a bird in the path? Goif. Thoughtsies. Yeah, looks like he's got a he's got a pretty solid opener here. Adjusting the camera a little bit here. Doing something with the camera at the very least. One good shuffle, and we'll be uh, we'll be going into six here. Mm. Hopefully, a keepable six. Mm -hmm. All right, it looks like a, a definitely more action-packed six here. Don't see any land though. Say, so is it all the way on the left there? Is that a land? Can't see. It looks like it might be. It oh, is. Okay. It's a misty. And we're in business, says Bob, and passes the turn. Catacomb is going to go fetch. Going all the way down to 17. Shock Probably grabbing an overgrown tomb, playing a bird, or a thought seize. I wouldn't feel bad about the turn when thought seize. No. A lot of axing yourself so you don't learn lose on turn three feels pretty okay. Mm -hmm. Knowing how to play the next few turns, so when to hold up anything feels good. It'll be interesting is if uh, Bob Spell pierces it back. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, nope, it's the bird. I almost want to see the lightning bolt from Bob here. That shock bolted. Mm -hmm. The good old bolt the bird mantra. Bolt me to bolt your bird. <laughs> Definitely not something you never go wrong with. Yep, that looks to be exactly what he's doing. I just gotta hope that Bobby finds a second land too. Mm hmm. He has a serum vision, so, so that should help. Yeah, he should be able to find it through there. He might not get his turn two land, but... No. Looked like he drew a click there. Good old $8 serum visions, as everyone loves. Ah, uh, we're shipping both those. <laughs> yeah. I don't think he drew a land off of it. If he did, it's a desolate lighthouse. Which doesn't feel too good. No. Not in the early turns. Desolate Lighthouse is a real good late game card, but uh, the early game, it's certainly lacking. Mm -hmm. so I did see at least one Pestermite in there, so he's uh, I think it was an Exarch, but an still. Exarch, yes. I don't know if that's worth keeping when you're uh, when you're you're keeping it to miss your third land drop. Yeah, no, it's especially you when you only that. have non-colored for your second. Yeah. The Desolate Lighthouse play that makes everyone feel awkward. It's one of the prices you pay for playing uh, non-basic lands. I've played uh, Blue Light Red Control enough to know that opening up a 7 that contained a Celestial Colonnade and a Sulphur Falls is definitely one of the worst feelings, especially when it's coupled with things like Path to Exile and Serum Visions. Mm -hmm. You're just like, man, I'd like to cast all these on time, and I actually cannot. <laughs> all right. My thought sees comes. Spell Pierce, Snappy, Click, and a Splinter Twisted. I think you almost have to take the Click so he doesn't push any of the cards. It didn't look like uh, Bob had a plethora of removal in his hands, so mm -hmm. I think saving the removal is definitely a uh, priority here. So the argument can be made because he has Goyf in hand, get that enchantment in the yard right away it wouldn't feel yeah. bad. Yeah, no, the, uh, getting the twin in the yard is definitely not a bad feeling either. I 
like Bob's got a treetop village as his follow-up land, I would imagine. But then again, he is one mana. No, no, never mind. Never mind. I don't know what I'm thinking. <laughs> Bob's sitting here. Bob takes the spell pierce. Interesting. I mean, the hand the hand wasn't bad, so I can't say that there was a definite worst choice. But I would personally say that uh, in my line, spell pierce was definitely the weakest of the choices. Spell skate the draw. That's, that isn't going to feel too great or too bad, though. I think you'd rather have had the third land, though. Oh, yeah. Bobby was definitely wishing that was the third land. Fortunately, Spell Sky can't change the target of anyone's serum visions. Three and a half minutes left on the clock. So. Yeah, I imagine they have at least a two minute extension from their judge call, so. Oh, there's the ch Oh. That's, that's rough. <laughs> that, that's that, brutal. Uh, that explains why he took the spell piers. Yeah. Uh, every play makes sense now. Mm -hmm. I did not see the choke in his hand, and that's. That makes a lot more sense now. That's almost game over. Yeah, he needs to find two more mana. And even then, it's going to be hard to land the twin afterwards. Oof. Doesn't I mean, find the third land. Yeah. And here comes the goy. Here she is. We have the overgrown team up for the follow-up Inquisition. Thought sees nothing. Goyf is once again a 4-5. Nope, we have the Steering Wildwood follow-up. Doesn't have the white to activate it, but next turn he can get in there with the Goyf and uh, Switch. Goyf is definitely going to take down that spell sky right now. Yes, he is. And the awkward part about blocking for Bobby is that it's just going to hurt him. Mm -hmm. Misty Rainforest to draw. Not a great draw for him, because he's, uh, he's going to have to fetch and probably shock himself. Because... Uh, one of the beauties of Choke and Shocklands is that uh, they don't work well together, to say the least. No. I, uh, I have watched unfortunate, an unfortunate amount of people under Choke fetch for a tap Hallowed Fountain or a tap Steam Vent, <laughs> and then go to untap and look at their Hallowed Fountain and just be like, oh, dang it. <laughs> That's an island. <laughs> These things did not work like I wanted them to. Turn down the treetop. Move to attacks. And we're in. Yep. Spellskate with the free block on treetop. Bob did not keep the giant growths in his deck. Looks like he has the thought season yet, no? Plays the uh the shrine tapped and uh, I think he's just gonna thought seize that splinter twin out of his hand at this point. Make your clock better with Goy for uh there's nothing in his hand that's threatening enough. Well he still has a bolt in his graveyard. Yeah, but he's going to have to tap down islands to do it. Yes. And that, that's uh, that's a very low value play. Ah, it looks like he went to the Exarch. I can see that as well. I suppose paying three, even if you're going to lose two of the, one of those lands, it's still going to stop two creatures coming at him. Yeah. Bobby not going to fetch. Probably going to wait to see if he can find something he needs to play. Mm -hmm. Don't know what he found. Looks like a pestermite. Yep. Are we going to... Uh, he's pulling that splinter twin to the front. and I think he's just wishing he had four mana so he could at least splinter twin Bob's <laughs> goyf. Get some value off of it. Mm -hmm. Most awkward thing about this choke right now is definitely the fact that uh, Bob has the tech edge. So as soon as he does get that fourth land, it's actually just going to—it's uh, just going to die. <laughs> mm -hmm. Bobby's not letting him untap the land. So that's fair. I think at this point, Robert doesn't care. So. No. Bobby goes down to nine. <laughs> I 
I don't think Bob needs to follow up with anything. He just has to keep doing what he's doing. Keep up tech edge for the fourth land and pass the turn. Nothing in his hand does anything particularly well. Huh? I'm gonna play the birds anyway. No. Extra man and never hurt anybody. <laughs> the only way this is gonna feel bad if Bobby draws that uh, sulfur falls. Uh, got a That's remand. a remand. That's not what Bobby was looking for at all. Things aren't looking good for Bobby Ferris right now. Time of the round was called, so it'll be interesting to see what kind of time extension they got. Bobby just passes the turn back to Bob. Bob untaps. Finds the abrupt decay for the spell skite. Ooh. That could be game over. Here. Now the damage is definitely going to start rolling in. Because uh, the decay would put an uh, artifact into the yard, making Goyth a little bit bigger. Yep. Up to K the spell skite. Activate the treetop village. And put Bobby down to one. The worst part for Bobby is that he can't even profitably play Stampcaster Mage as a chump blocker at this point. Because he'll have to fetch an island, and because of that choke, that uh, that island's just going to remain tapped. He's basically going to set himself back another turn. Unfortunately, the way that my math is going right now, he would take eight for himself down to one, so he couldn't even crack the Misty anyways, if he doesn't block here. Yeah. I don't know if Bobby has an out. Have those two activate Street Top Village. In we go. Oh, well, they're not counting Goyf. They need Goyf should be up to a five. Yeah. Bobby is definitely taking his time here. Announce the life total change to seven, probably. Hope we can get confirmation from the uh, from the life dice here. Playing the Tassigir, removing the graveyard. Those beats. This is a definite value remand here if he wants to uh, get any value off of it. Unfortunately, once again, we are having to tap that island. And uh, unfortunately, they he should be at go. one though. They forgot the artifact in the yard. He should be at one, so he can't even remand it here. If they miss the artifact, that's uh, yes, yeah. It's a lesson to learn at home. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, uh, Goy's power and toughness is derived information. Your opponent is not required to tell. Is not required to tell you what it is. He's required to tell you the truth of what it is. Mm -hmm. If he tells you anything, but he's not required to remind you of it. Which they both seem to have forgot the artifact. I don't know what we're thinking about here. I think they might have just realized that Goyf was supposed to be a 5-6. It is derived information though, so there's no there's no really going back after Bob declared the uh, life total change. If he missed the artifact going to the graveyard, that's more on him than it is anyone else. Looks like we are going to correct it, though. Yep. I 
think we have a judge sorting this out. Almost six minutes over time now. Let's see if we can uh, wrap things up here. I think I saw some feet next to the table. So. Yeah. I don't think uh, I don't think Bobby has much of a chance here. So. I, I definitely agree if he's arguing that Bob announced the life total change is seven, that it should be seven. <laughs> he did play the tasker, representing that he felt that he had represented an accurate board state. At this point, too much time has passed. Yes. So if they haven't done the turns yet, this shouldn't uh, this shouldn't impact the game too much. No, this. I think Robert has this in the bag. Oh, well, I guess we're rewinding. Oh, okay. We're rewinding to damage. Okay. So now going for the five six. and now it's eight damage. Yep. Not sure what the problem is here anymore. Looks like Bobby's just gonna take eight. He doesn't really have a... Uh... No, I don't. I think at this point, the, uh, the matches. Probably never had Judge Dan Milovitz in there. He might have approved the rewind to damage. Okay, Bobby goes to one. Goyf is still a five six. And Tassiger is still played. And now we move to Bobby's turn. <laughs> I think Bobby realized that he can't win this game anyway. And that's real awkward. The yes. <laughs> steam vent draw is definitely not the one we wanted. No, he needed that man in the last turn. That way he could uh, pester might and tap things down. Looks on. like uh, Robert Brostrom's going to take this one in three. Not entirely certain what we're looking at here. <laughs> yep, there we go. We have the extension of the hand, and Robert Brostrom will take this one. All right. So uh, we just saw Junk Takedown to win. Yep, and uh, I think it's an awkward matchup all around. It really depends on how much removal Junk is going to draw, as well as how many combo pieces Splinter Twin can get through. If we can land an Exarch with Twin without, having that, without them having an Abrupt Decay, it's a pretty easy win. Unfortunately, they normally run three to four Abrupt Decays, yes. as well as three to four Paths, as well as, you know, any number of other removal spells, Slaughter Pack, Smother, uh, Go for the Throw, Doom Blade. Mm -hmm. Basically, insert two mana black removal spell here that takes care of Twin. Which wall? Yes, Twin has his Blood Moon that can just take down Junk. He runs his Choke, which feels the exact same for him. Yeah, no, like the, the, the three mana spells here were actually probably the most impactful. And I found it uh, a little awkward that Bobby actually sided out the uh, third Blood Moon because I do feel that Blood Moon is definitely a very good card in this matchup. Yeah. Because slam it down turn three, it can just be a game over. And the fact that Bob can't play around Blood Moon very well. Mm -hmm. Like, he, he definitely has the capability of doing so, but in doing so, he ends up hurting himself more than by oh, shocking yeah. himself, even. It, it slows him down. Very yeah, much. considerably. Being able to both turn one birds and then follow it up with not a land and thought seizing someone is definitely a play that uh, Junk wants to make. So having that overgrown tomb is definitely vital to that play. Um, so, we should be having round two uh, getting up soon. Uh, uh, we'll be back in just a little bit.